All right. So when we convert ingredients, it's much easier to use the crisscross method. And when you use the crisscross method, basically you just draw a table with four blocks. Like that. And uh, then you'll be able to simplify for any unit. So let's then um, look at the ingredients on the left. The ingredients for half a dozen muffins, so this uh, half a dozen, remember, is six. A dozen is 12, and half a dozen is six. So all these ingredients on the left are for baking six muffins, uh, ingredients that you need if you want to bake six, six muffins. All right. So 1.1, 1 .1, how many grams of baking powder are needed to bake 60 muffins? All right, so here's the baking powder. 40 grams of baking powder will give you six because the ingredients are for six muffins. So 40 grams of baking powder will give you six muffins. So now the question is, how much baking powder will you then need for 60 muffins? Remember, it's under muffins when you do these calculations. And then the crisscross method is... You multiply across, and then you divide sideways. So 60 multiplied by 40 divided by 6. So 400 so 400 grams of baking powder you will need if you want to bake 60 muffins. 1.2. How many muffins can be produced from 450 grams of butter? This time we're dealing with butter. Okay, again, to a table. All right, so you need 100 grams of butter to bake half a dozen muffins or six muffins. Remember all the ingredients were for six muffins. Now if you have 450 grams of butter, how many muffins will you produce? So again grams under grams and crisscross means you multiply the 40 by 6, you multiply across and then you divide sideways. Then you divide by 100. So 27 muffins. So 450 grams of butter raw give you 27 muffins. Let's move on to the next part of the exercise, the next examples. All right, how many liters of milk are needed to bake 120 uh, muffins? Again, we will start with the table. And again, remember all the ingredients on the left are for half a dozen or six muffins. So this time we're looking at milk. Uh, milk. And this is the ingredients of milk required. So 120 milliliters of milk are required for six muffins. So now the question is how much milk would I then need? For 120 muffins. So again, muffins under muffins, so 120 muffins. So again, crisscross method 120 times 120 divided by 6. All 
All right, this is milliliters. Remember, on the left hand side, we had milliliters. So we have 2400 milliliters. The last step is to then convert that to liters because the question asked how many liters of milk are needed, not milliliters. So how do you change milliliters to liters? You divide by 1000. Give you 2.4 liters of milk. 1.4. How many hours are needed to bake 360 muffins? So at this time we're dealing with time. And if you look at the very last point, there's the information on the time it takes to bake. Uh, now the tray doesn't take six muffins, it actually takes 12 muffins. Uh, and the 12 muffins you can bake in 25 minutes. Let's put that into the table before we answer the question on the time. So 12 muffins we can bake in 25 minutes. So then how much time or how many hours do we need to bake 360 muffins? Of course, muffins under muffins. So the 360 there. Okay, so we get 750. But remember, we measured on the right hand side, we got minutes. But the hours. So 750. we must just divide the minutes by 60 to change them to hours. Twelve comma five hours. Okay, so the next example is not for ingredients, but we can also use the crisscross method. Basically, we can use the crisscross method for any complex conversions. So let's look at this one. A full tank capacity of a Toyota Taz is sixty liters. It costs one thousand three hundred and fifty eight forty cents to fill up the car. So let's put that into the table. And by the way, it doesn't matter which values on the left or the right. If you wanted to start with the rands on the left and put the liters on the right, it doesn't matter. All right. So the question is the cost of 18 liters. 18. that will be the cost of 18 liters. Last example. All right, so in the last example, I will show you how to use the quiz cross method to calculate uh, distances from one place to another. So then let's say you are given the number line at the bottom here. So the first thing you would do is you would take a ruler and you would measure the distance of the number line. Before you go, you go to the map. Just measure the distance of the number line. And let us say the distance is 1.9 centimeters from the start to the end of that number line. So put that information into your... So 1.9 centimeters represents 250 kilometers in real life. And 
And then now you can answer the question. So you first measure on the number line before you measure the distance from one place to another. So now we can measure. The question is asking us to calculate the distance from Cape Town to Durban. So now you take your ruler and you measure again, but this time a distance from Cape Town to Durban. Okay, so let's say when you take a ruler and you measure from Cape Town to Durban, you get 13 centimeters, just as an example. So then you can take this information to the table to say, okay, 13 centimeters, and then if you want to calculate the actual distance, you do the crisscross method. 13 multiplied by 250 divided by 1.9. All right, so you find that the distance, if you round it off to the nearest unit, and under kilometers. 1,710. I just want to mention that what you do with the number line, you can also do with the bar, bar scale. So if you had a bar scale, you could measure first on the bar scale using your ruler, put that information in the first row like we did here, and then measure the distance from one place to another, and then use the crisscross method to calculate the actual distance. I hope this was useful. Thank you.